Well, as you can see, we didn't get our top 25 features we desire in a catamaran and our modifications to our electric outboard done this week. And there's some good reasons for that. The Admiral was sick all week, so that didn't help. And there's a lot more work to getting this done than we anticipated, so it's taking a few more hours. But it's coming along. And as you can see, the electronics are all mounted in here now. The control box is also in with its support so that it gives it an air gap underneath it here. And all the 3D printed parts that we have done to hold this together are all printed and in as well. So it's coming along, but we have to get to the fiberglassing and uh, just tidying up the wiring and a few different things like that. So that'll all happen next week in our video. But we still want to release a video this week. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go on into the office and we're going to go ahead and answer some of the viewer questions that have been posted on our various videos. So let's get to that right now. Well, this is actually a really good day to answer some questions from our viewers because we're hitting a mini milestone today on YouTube. We're just about to hit 1,000 subscribers, which is only a very small channel, but we've only been at this with the boat videos for about seven weeks, so we think we're doing very well with that. So thank you again for subscribing and for all of you who are watching. We really appreciate your time. So let's take a look at some of the questions that people have asked online. And we'll give you some, uh, not only answers to those, but some visuals to go with that. So let's take a look at the first one. So let's get into it. We'll start with a question from Dick Coach, who asked, The one thing I have heard from other Blue Water sailors is that they would like to have an area that can be used as a workshop to accommodate not only a work area to perform eventual repairs that will be needed, but a place to store tools and spare parts, as was done in the winds. Well, Dick, we watched the same videos, including the Gone with the Winds top 10 video list, which included a workshop. There have been many other cruisers who have mentioned one as well. That's why we already designed an area for that purpose on SV Links, and why it is also in our top 25 list, which we'll go over in part two next week. And Dick is not the only viewer asking about the workshop. Red Catman 74 asked, In one of your walkthroughs, it would be nice to see your workshop area and the storage you will have for tools and parts. Well, here it is. Shoning added two stand-up areas in front of the two forward cabins, accessed by this hatch. We are modifying the boat to make the area a little larger so that we have more space for a workbench and stool. We will take out or just modify this non-structural bulkhead, possibly leaving it below the sole and around the edges of the compartment, but cut out in the center. However, in this image, I can only remove it completely to show you how it opens up the area. We will then seal up this bulkhead and remove the storage from the forward cabin on the port side. That's okay. We're adding in more shelving in this area so the cabin will only lose a little storage. That leaves us with a wide enough space to have a workbench against the bulkhead. I am leaving this shelf to represent that bench, but it will be a bit lower down. Behind that, in this area, we will have bins of tools and spare parts. This workshop is definitely small, since this portion of the holes is quite narrow but it is a completely separate area where stinky work on a maciator pump, for example, won't permeate through the salon if we had been working on the cockpit table. In that forward compartment, we can leave the hatch open above to allow airflow, and there are side windows that reach that part of the boat, so there will be additional natural light coming inside. Okay, so next up, Mike C. asked, where will the cooktop be placed? I assume with five kilowatts of solar, it will be induction. You're right, Mike. We're going with induction since we are a hybrid boat with a lot of lithium battery energy storage. We wanted to get rid of propane since there is no universal standard and you constantly have to buy or jury rig up adapters to get your bottles filled, assuming you can even find a place to have them filled in some countries. Since we get energy through wind and sun to recharge our batteries, we have endless electricity and don't have to go searching for a place to fill propane bottles. Also, propane is a very flammable gas so we eliminate the danger of a fire from that source on the boat. But your question was, where are we placing the cooktop? The answer is, nowhere. We're not going to have a permanent cooktop. I'm a big believer in multitaskers on a boat, and in this case, we're talking about counter space. We don't want to use up any counter space for a cooktop. Instead, we plan to use separate induction pads, at least three of them. Then, we will only bring out as many as we need to cook that meal, in many cases, this is just one or two. After we are done, 
They store away and leave that counter space available for other uses. We are even thinking of making two cutting boards that fit into the farmhouse sink, kind of like this. On one side, they are cutting boards, and you can use both or just one at a time, leaving half the sink available for water. If we flip them over, on the other side they have holes partway through, where the feet of the induction pads will insert to keep them from sliding off. They will also have rails to keep pots from sliding off the induction pad, with movable rails that attach to adjust for the size of the pot. That makes our sink area a multitasker, and the cutting boards are also multitaskers. I hope that answers your question. Now, on to the next one. Mermpid1 asked, Are you able to access helm control for repairs easily? It might be difficult with a fridge there. The helm controls on SV-Links are not in the bulkhead behind the fridge. They are in this separate steering console, which has an access door on the back to get to the steering and all the electronics above. Below, in the bike garage, there will be access to other steering cogs that lead back to the stern, so everything is accessible. On to the next question. Bill Holland asked, have you considered a retractable or liftable propeller shaft? On that issue, we don't feel it's worth the high cost and complexity. We like to keep things simple when possible. In this case, the prop shaft and prop are both above the level of the hull that sits on the ground while we were beached, as you can see from this image. Therefore, they don't need to be retractable. In our virtual tour video, Rebecca Grant asked, I'd really like to know more about what the holes will be like. Trying to pause a video in the pic, and it's difficult to see if it's a wet bathroom or shower toilet separate. Well, let's get into that, Rebecca. As you can see from the 3D render, our performance holes are narrow, and that makes the living space down in the holes pretty tight. That's what you get if you want a performance catamaran, and we do. However, we managed to get a few things we like in there anyway. First of all, each cabin has an ensuite head with toilet and sink. As you can see, they have a door to close them off from the common hallway area, and a door inside that goes into their individual head. There's a shared shower between the two heads in each hall, with access from doors in the heads. We added a full height locker to each cabin, which is the one I'm highlighting. There's plenty of storage in each cabin, and we are adding some additional shelving not seen in this render. Each hull has a common area hallway with a small washer dryer. We went with one in each hull simply because we wanted redundancy. While both are working, the crew staying in that hull have their own, but if one breaks, and everything on a boat breaks, we will still have one working, hopefully, while we get the other one fixed or replaced. A last note, we extended all four beds to seven feet long for taller crew members' comfort. Next up, Shelley Bradish Cooney seemed to take a little issue with the fact that we say we designed SV Langs. So let's take a look at what she said. Craig Shoning did the designing. You have done modifications. Well, that is somewhat true. I did start with the design of the hulls from the Solitaire 1490, so I can't say I designed the 1520 from scratch. I did not mean to infer that I did. However, that being said, Shoning Designs looked over my 3D concept model and agreed to collaborate with me to create a new kit model for their lineup. They chose to name it the 1520 and told me that it will not be part of the Solitaire lineup but have its own page on their website. That means this was different enough to call it another model. So, though I did not design the 1520 from scratch, I added enough design ideas into the mix to have Shoning decide to name it a completely new model and not call it a modification of the Solitaire 1490. I don't need to be named the designer of this boat, but I did add design elements to this new model when we collaborated to create the new 1520. Therefore, I stand by my original statement when I went over all the designs I added to the 1520 in our virtual tour. But that should not take away from the excellent design of the 1490 that I started with, which was completely done by Shoning Designs. Let's move on to the next comment. 99 Sean Walsh made a suggestion. He said, you might want to add a skylight on the helm roof so you can see the trim of the mainsail. We agree with you. Fortunately, we thought of that early on. As you can see from my original concept model, there is a skylight in the helm hardtop next to the solar panel. It's long enough for the line handler or the helmsman to use to look up at the mainsail. Next up, Rob Thompson asked a question and made a suggestion. So let's start with this question. How is your reefing going to work? I would also suggest you add rainwater collection around the edge of your top, and the gutter for that acts as a secure handhold when going forward in lumpy conditions. To answer your question, we have three reefs set up on our Ullman mainsail, and all three lead back to the line handling area, so we don't have to go to the master reef. 
As for your rainwater collection and handhold suggestion, that is exactly the system we already designed into the roof edge. Great minds think alike, though my mind is just pretty good. Still, we're thinking along the same lines, Rob. For the next question, Will Joe asked, how much labor cost are you allowing for? Well, we're not allowing for any since we are building the boat ourselves and we work for YouTube comments, like Will's. In truth, we cannot afford to hire anyone to build our catamaran. We spent all our money buying the kit and all the systems it needs to be ready to sail around the planet. Brian, Marianne, and I are all retiring at the end of this year, so we can work full time on building the boat. Fortunately, we also have other help. My cousin Todd has offered to help build the boat, and there are many other friends and family who have offered assistance, like my sister, Rhonda, and her husband, Mike. The good news is, Brian, Marianne, Todd, and me should be enough to get it done in two years. But with even more help, we will stay on schedule. The next question is from Stephen Murray, who asked, I cannot remember if you mentioned the hours required to build the cat. Still, that is a very reasonable price for a large cat. A production cat of the same length would be between double to triple that price, and of course, the waiting time for it to be delivered, usually two to three years. Schoening estimates 6,000 man-hours to finish the Solitaire 1490. That should be similar to the 1520. With our four-person team, we can throw 12,000 man-hours at it in two years, more than double their estimate. However, being first-time builders, we figure it will take us 10,000 hours, but that leaves us with a couple thousand extra in case we're wrong. As for Stefan's comment about the cost, he's right on target. We are building SV Links for at least one-third the price of a production 50-foot performance catamaran, maybe even better than that. However, you can have a Solitaire 1490 built at a yard in Thailand for about 800000 so our cat will not be quite half the price of that. All right, I think that's enough for this week, but in the future videos, we're going to answer questions from the previous video each week. We'll do that right at the end of the video. And... We would like to thank you all again for watching our videos. We really appreciate your time and we hope that you find some interesting things in here and maybe it'll inspire you to think about getting a big 50 foot performance cat from Shoning Designs. The 1520 should be up for sale soon on their website, but they're still working on that. So give them a little bit. This is a brand new design and they've got to get all the documentation put together. All right. Well, hit that like and subscribe button and the bell icon if you'd like to be reminded to see the new video when it arrives. And we'll really try to get that part two of finishing up the electric outboard and the rest of the top 25 things we want in our catamaran. So see you next week.